you know, these are the kind of videos you just don't want to make. And for me, I feel like I have to make this video to pay tribute to the great iconic larger than life voice of Meatloaf. I'm not really going to go into a full back history on Meatloaf. I'm just going to make this short and brief. I first heard Meatloaf around 1990 when I was 11 years old. A friend of mine in junior high who actually hated heavy metal, hated hard rock, but loved Meatloaf and Bat Out of Hell. So... That's how I first heard Bad Out of Hell. But only the song Bad Out of Hell, not the whole album yet. He had this tape of Bad Out of Hell, but he would only play that song from that album. So I had no clue what the full album sounded like till maybe a couple years later when I decided to buy it for $5 on cassette tape. And... That song, Bad Out of Hell, man, I really loved it when I first heard it. I thought it had excellent guitar work. I thought the vocals were excellent. Just very majestic and operatic sounding and larger than life sounding, really, and epic. You know, when I first heard that track, Bad Out of Hell. And I thought the album cover was just absolutely cool, you know. Just really cool, man. I thought, okay, the rest of this album has to be like early heavy metal or something, you know. Well, I remember buying it on cassette tape roughly around 92. 13. You know. I think I had like allowance money. And I bought it. Walked down to our um, department store in town at the time we had and bought it. And I remember taking it home and being very disappointed in it. This is back then at 13, though. I'm like, wow, the rest of this album doesn't have that at all. So it did take me quite a few years to really appreciate the album in its entirety for what it is, you know. And once I got it, I'm like, this album's freaking genius. It's phenomenal. Or it's phenomenal, excuse me. So, yeah. And it's the only Meatloaf album I own. Bad Out of Hell. I did used to have Bad, Bad Out of Hell 3, The Monsters Loose, but I no longer have it. And what more can be said about this album? It's legendary. It's iconic. You know? It sold, well, over 43 million copies worldwide. That's pretty impressive. And, and the album still sells. Probably roughly around 20,000 copies still to this date each year. And I'm pretty sure now those sales are going to go back up. You know, with this unfortunate passing that has happened. And... You know, I still haven't listened to every Meatloaf album. I mean, and that's kind of on my own ignorance. I just went by what I've read or what I've heard about certain albums. Now, as of a year ago, I decided to check out more of his studio albums that I didn't hear. Like the ones I was familiar with were Bad Out, the Bad Out, the Bad Out of Hell trilogies. Excuse me, there. Obviously, you know, Bad Out of Hell. Bad Out of Hell 2, Back Into Hell, which resurrected Meatloaf's career again when he hooked back up with Jim Steinman, who also we unfortunately lost last May. And then, you know, we got Bad Out of Hell 3, The Monsters Loose, which I think is a really good album. After Bad Out of Hell 3, The Monsters Loose, I did check out Hang Cold Teddy Bear. And then I just kind of fell off the radar because I wasn't really into that album at the time. Now the albums I did revisit here. 
Dead Ringer, which is a decent album. That would have been the follow up, you know, to Bat Out of Hell. The other album was Bad Attitude from 1984, which I actually enjoyed that album. I know Meat Loaf definitely had a downward slope in the 80s, but I think that's a very underrated album. And I definitely plan on, you know, purchasing these albums, CDs, you know, whatever, whatever physical copies I can get. But man, it's just sad, man, that we lose another iconic figure like this in music, you know, such a legendary voice. A, a phenomenal performer. He put his body on the line when he performed. You know, I mean, my goodness, he performed with a broken leg. He would literally perform to the point where he would pass out after, you know, the show was over, you know, backstage. And, you know, recently he's had some pretty bad health issues and back on... September 25th, he did perform live again. It was only a couple of songs, you know, where he did perform again. And he looked good and he sounded good, you know. I believe he only performed three tracks. I did watch it on YouTube the other day when I was going through checking out tributes and, you know, just old interviews with Meatloaf. You know, after hearing about the unfortunate passing that happened. And, you know, Meatloaf also had a film career. And he had a Broadway career for a little bit back in the early 70s. 14 albums total. The first thing he ever recorded was in 1971 being a Motown album. You know, called Stoney and Meatloaf which I was actually just sampling a little bit of that before going live, and it's quite different. Also, I should mention, too, before, you know, leaving, that he also did vocals on this, on five tracks. Ted Newton's 1976 album, Free For All, you know, which is a phenomenal Ted Newton album. Writing on the wall, right? I'm just looking here. Yeah. Writing on the wall, man. It's a phenomenal track. Hammerfall. Or, excuse me, Hammer Down. Which, to me, that track is like pre-new wave of British heavy metal. And I always wondered, man, what would it have been like if Meatloaf would have done a heavy metal album? Or went in a heavy metal direction? Or, you know... I think he would have been a great heavy metal frontman, too, because... He's a really good front man on this album and on the five tracks he sings on. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, he's been in movies, Wayne's World. You know, it's the security guard. Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny. You know, and obviously, you know, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Which really made Meatloaf pretty famous. Then all these great collaborations with Jim Steinman over the years. You know. I mean. I know there's a couple other tracks out there too that were originally going to be Meatloaf tracks. But ended up being used by artists like Bonnie Tyler and Air Supply. Pertainly Total Eclipse from the Heart. What's originally going to be a meatloaf song, or be used for a meatloaf album, I should say. But it never happened because of meatloaf and Jim Steinman's fallout. But in closing, you know, I'm not going to keep this much longer. I just want to say thanks to meatloaf for being a great entertainer, a great performer, and a great singer. That's one thing Meatloaf, the thing I can respect too is Meatloaf never wanted to be called a star 
or a celebrity. He just wanted to be looked at. He wanted to be looked at as a singer and a vocalist and a performer. And that's all I pretty much got to say for now. Rest in peace, Meatloaf. Thanks for the music. <laughs>